Yes. Oh, yes. It's finally here. The Mark 7 diecast. Ah. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait to unbox it. It's going to be so good. Oh, jeez. Mark 42 suit. No. You're getting shelled, dude. That goes for you, too, War Machine. Mark 2. Nope, nope, nope. You're not sticking around for this unboxing. Sorry, dude. You're getting shelved. All right? So break it up. And, uh... Oh, this is going to be so good. Oh. All right, guys. You guys got to leave. I can't work like this, all right? Come on. No. No, dude. Nope, 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 nope. All right? See ya. Jeez. Hello, folks. Thank you for joining me once again on another visual tour. Denobi 2 here. This is phenomenally going to be special. Special edition, might I add. This is the Mark 7 diecast from Hot Toys. Special edition from Sideshow Collectibles. I am just jumping right into this thing. This is this one here. I want to say I, I've had it on pre-order for over a year. Uh, 14 months. My God, they sure did take their time on this thing. They really, really did. I'm excited. I really, really am. The uh, oh, look at this box art. This is a uh, that's, that's pretty. Very, very pretty. There's the uh, sideshow exclusive uh, emblem there. They uh, they kind of changed it up here for the diecast series. They have it. Uh, look at that cool uh, imprinted design there on the uh, styrofoam. Yeah, it's typically with the uh, diecast, it's usually designed into two parts where it would uh, separate from the top and bottom, but I guess they went with a different uh, method here. Uh, oh my god, it must be beautiful in there. I'm not taking any chances here. Hold on. Okay, now I'm ready. Brace for impact. See? <laughs> I, um, it's the Mark 7. This is one of the founding members of the uh, original 7. The original 7 suits, which a lot of folks consider very, very special. I'm jumping right into the uh, special, special edition, and it's the... Uh, little uh, plastic uh, hologram here based on the rescue pod as uh, Tony Stark is getting his ass kicked from Loki. This rescue pod uh, flies out, jumps out at him, and uh, breaks through the windows and saves him. Uh, these little hologram little tchotchke things, they're, they're, they're cute. They're, I, I you know, for, for me, eh, if, if it didn't include this, uh, I, I wouldn't lose any sleep. It's it's a cute little tchotchke thing. Um, I'll probably take it to work and put it on my uh, office desk. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? We got the... Uh, oh, see, this is... I want to look at this. Yeah. This here is nice. They really, really did a good job on this uh, on this sculpt and this, and this paint application. Where Hot Toys really excels with the iron suits is... Uh, it's, it's, it's the paint application. Look at that detail. My God, that is incredible. That is some good stuff. I will not be posing my Mark VII with the uh, with Tony's uh, exposed face. That's a cool little face plate, little battle damage. No, no, my uh, my my Mark VII is will it will find its home in the Hall of Armor, Hall of Armor that I had uh, custom built years ago. Look at this guy. This guy. Wow. First impression, this guy's beefy. Different, very uh, very chunky, very beefy. I love the weight. I love the weight on this guy. I really, really do. Especially since, uh, before making this video, I dusted off my uh, my suits and I was uh, reposing the Mark VII, the, the plastic one, and holding this guy now, big difference. That leg popped out. Just to get, oh, see, oh, that's neat. Little uh, hip hip rockets there, little flare flare modules. That's kind of cool. It's uh, it's not spring activated or anything. It uh, it's by pressure, it's held by tension, pops right out. And the plastic around the knee 
tips me off that that leg separates. And I'm just testing that. This is this little feature right here uh, where uh, that little plastic cap from the thigh, That's a, that was uh, incorporated in the first Mark 7. So that's really what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of exploring the differences between the original Mark 7, uh, the plastic version, and this guy right here. I, it's, it's light years. I can tell you right now it's very, very different. I I can tell just by holding the figure, by adjusting it, by articulation, it is uh, it is light years. Um, it really is. It is completely different. And it should be. This guy's not cheap. Over 400 bucks. I do like that waist articulation. I'm very, very happy with that. Very nice. The, the neck adjustment as he's looking up is there. Uh, the the airfoil flaps are, are going to be my arch enemy in this video. I, I don't like how flimsy those flaps come off just by me touching it. I later learned uh, they're, they're purposely designed like that so that you can uh, reposition them in the rescue pod, which I'll, I'll show at the end of the video. But uh, yeah, the only the only bad thing I, I, I would say, and, and if you guys know me, I when it comes to the Iron Man suits, Hot Toys to me always always does right. Uh, is probably the uh, those airfoils. Those airfoils are a big pain in the butt. Like that. I like oh I like the the two part stage on the helmets. I like that. I like how the face how you can swap out the faceplate and the top part. It's all magnetized. They're they're making it a little bit easier to to reach the actual switch and the batteries and, and so forth. I'm waiting on I'm waiting for that one day where you'll be able to just plug and play these guys and it just lights up and you can add a external power source or something. I'm not I'm not talking about wires, those little thin micro wires that uh, that you would attach to the actual battery terminals. I'm talking like you would you would attach it to a base and it just lights up and still retain the articulation. This arc reactor chest here that's that's brilliant they it's it's beautiful they really i love that that two-tone paint they have going on there in the arc reactor I, I i couldn't resist i had to bring out the uh original mark 7 just for comparison i wanted to just have that visual look i'm like you know if i'm going to bring it out i might as well show you folks that visual representation the that the, the biggest difference is is the that plastic captures a lot of light and they went with that flat hot rod cherry red which downplays the light it absorbs versus the plastic one looks like plastic big difference i also wanted to i pulled out the scale too i wanted to see how what what the weight is on this one here and it clocks in at just a little over two pounds i want to say the war machine mark one is still breaks the scale i think was it three and change three pounds or something like that the war machine i think is still the heaviest and still the beefiest out of all the suits, out of all the die-cast suits, mind you. Look at the, the little uh, swappable arms here, a little laser, little pistol gauntlets here. Shoots a, I won't be using those. I just wanted to look at them and kind of share with you guys. I also, uh, I'll be using the articulated hands on this. My Mark VII will be displayed in the Hall of Armor, so I, I always, always go with the articulated fingertips. And then the jazz hands, if in case you wanted a flight pose. I won't be using these. I just thought they're kind of cool. Pretty neat. All right, what else we got here? And, uh, see, this is this is where the price point comes in. Look at all those accessories. That's where all the that's where all the labor intensive care goes into. A lot of these hot toy parts are hand painted, and there is a ton of accessories here. That's what I'm doing. I, I'm not gonna lie to you, folks. I am. I'm like, what am I getting for? What did I pay? Four hundred and thirty dollars. This is probably one of the, up up to this point, one of the most expensive diecast Iron Man suits. So they have to justify. Uh, well, to us, to the collectors, looking at this base here. I mean, for this price point, I would have loved to have had this base lit right here. That's a perfect example. That's that to me, I see as a shortcut. So if you're going to shortcut this base and those uh, those, those uh, uh, light effects, what what would you be able to compensate? Oh, batteries here. Definitely going to power up the Mark 7. Definitely. 
Uh, and judging by this, as I haven't looked at the instructions yet, these are all the pieces I'm going to need to assemble the rescue pod. This is where they also get you to, because I later learned at the end of the video that I really do like the look of the rescue pod, but you can have one or the other. You can't have both. And that's where they kind of get you. There, oh, you can buy another suit. You technically can buy another diecast Mark 7, and you can get a completely different figure. You can have the battle damage effects on it. You can have the rescue pod posed right next to the Mark 7. So they're ooh, they're they're getting creative. You know, you know they're getting very very creative. So, but. As Hot Toy Collectors, and for those of you who are not aware, the Mark, the original Mark 7, the plastic version, was one of the most abused molds. I Was it like five different variations of the Mark 7? I mean, it was ridiculous. It seemed like every six months there was like another Mark 7, it was like a Sub-Zero, there was a Python, battle damage. Uh, not to mention that the Mark 7 was repurposed a lot to, uh, to the uh, house party protocol. This right here, I'm showing off my micro drill. Uh, if you folks need ideas for Christmas, why don't you get your loved one a micro drill? Love it, it's my, my best friend. A link in the description by clicking my link and picking up your own Sand Smart uh, micro drill drill. Look at me. I should at least pronounce it right. I, I, it's, it's a screwdriver, it's a micro screwdriver. It's a USB micro screwdriver, that's what it is. I'm calling it a damn drill. I love it, I use it all the time. The link is in the description. I like showing off uh, the replacement of the batteries. I've I've learned as these videos age, if, if YouTube lets me keep them up, a lot of folks like to use them as reference material uh, when they buy uh, a Hot Toys Iron Man figure they'll actually they've I've told they've told me like hey Denobi I like when you swap the batteries because you show me uh, on the videos where the actual battery compartments are because sometimes they'll buy it second hand and the instructions aren't included so and, and because they're so expensive you kind of want to know where they're located and how to actually access them I've also been scolded by commenters telling me that I should be using a electric micro screwdriver because I could script the, the, the screw this SandSmart electric screwdriver is uh, it works with with motion, with wrist motion. So when you turn left or right slightly by applying pressure, that's what turns it on. Testing out the battery compartments. That's the other thing too. You've got to test these battery compartments. A lot of I, I get that all the time. Oh, dude, I don't like to put the batteries in this because it'll corrode. You got to test this crap out, guys. You folks, you got to test this out. This is an expensive figure. You want to you want to unbox it, display it, and then 6 months down the road you you want to you, you realize that it, that the terminals don't work. Well, if you ever decide to resell it in the secondary market, that affects the price. I'm not kidding. If I ever decide if well, I don't, I, I tend to buy a lot of my stuff, you know, first run, but if 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 these terminal if these connectors aren't working, you have to report it on eBay. You have to let the buyer know, and you have to adjust the price accordingly. It's a defective product, so always test this stuff out. These extra three batteries, I, I they go in the uh, rescue pod here, which I was very surprised. It actually had a light source to it. I thought it'd be static. I honestly thought they took a shortcut on that. So uh, they got points. Hot Toys earned points on this because I didn't think the rescue pod would have a self-illuminating arc reactor so that's that's kind of cool all right let's get some uh, poses on here it's a beautiful so oh, I should have fixed that uh, that shoulder that shoulder uh, cap on there doesn't look good <laughs> uh, it's 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 a beautiful suit this is I, I I can't say anything bad other than those stupid flaps that fly off I love the paint application I love the articulation I love I love the weight to the figure. It doesn't feel cheap. If they're asking, you know, if, if Hot Toys is, is asking you the, the the consumer, hey, we're gonna charge over 400 bucks for this, they're making sure that the value is there. Well, I don't know about 
value, but they're making sure it's it's worth your your bang for your buck. <laughs> Even the back looks good. Look at that. Look at that weather and the detail on there, the scuff marks. I even like the uh, the little uh, painted thruster underneath uh, underneath its feet. See, this is not that right there. Look at that crap. I, I don't. I get it that it was purposely designed like that so that you can swap it out with the rescue pod, but it's annoying. I wanted to kind of point out too one of the things that hindered the original Mark Seven, the first it was the rubber joints in that pink panty situation and because it was it was like a soft plastic and didn't age really well I was really more common with the mark six by the time we got to the mark seven on the black version it wasn't too bad swapping out the Tony's head I wanted to kind of see what that looked like it's cool I, I again I, I I don't intend to pose this mark seven with with, uh, with the battle damage I don't even think I don't think this is with the uh, parts the accessories that they included you couldn't really create a true battle damage mark 7 which hint hint i suspect they're going to be releasing down the road i wouldn't be surprised i mean i'm talking like hardcore battle damage you know the you know 2012 the battle of new york the chitari this was a pain in the butt what i'm doing now is i'm i'm curious i was not going to show in this video i didn't really plan on Assembling the, the rescue pod, but I got curious. I'm like, this is cool. I want to see what this looks like. It's a pain in the ass. It really is. Once you go through all this work, you almost want to keep it in the rescue pod mode. I, I did not find it enjoyable at all. That coming from someone, I love playing with my Iron Man figures. <laughs> I like posing them. I like taking photos. And I like I like my suits are 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 like my little my little babies. But this right here, this assembling, this thing, this was a pain in the butt. I really, and I looked at the instructions. I, I did, and, and the instructions were not the best. <laughs> but it, overall, it does look cool. And you know, even in the end, once once I think I assembled the rescue pod, I, I'm still not confident I did a good job in assembling it properly. If that makes any sense. <laughs> but it, it looks cool. I didn't even want to put the laser beams coming out. I, I didn't even want to go. I'm like, no, it's just too much. Was... <laughs> but once I think I got it assembled, it looks cool. I'm like, oh, that's pretty badass. I Okay. All right. That's kind of cool. I'd like to kind of just have that displayed in flight mode. That's very, very neat. Yeah. You know, 15, 20 minutes later, assembling this bad boy back again, taking your time so you don't scuff any of the... <laughs> The joints. Let's uh, go the wrist rocket. I won't be assembling that. Nope. Some uh, thigh components to switch it to battle, and that's kind of neat. I like that gunmetal. That gunmetal plank they use is phenomenal. Very cool. All right, you know what time it is. Time to issue in the Mark S7 to its final place, its final resting place in the Hall of Armor. And there it goes. Gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful suit. If you folks can swing the Mark VII, I, I, I think it's worth it. it I, I know these prices keep climbing, but if you don't have the Mark VII and you are intending to collect the original seven, it's definitely one to add. It really is. Folks, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave your comments below. God, I can't wait for that uh, Mark 1 diecast. You know we're getting that Mark 1 diecast. 